Tonight from Fernwood, Fernwood tonight, 30 minutes of very remarkable entertainment coming to you almost live with your host for tonight, Mr. Barth Gimbel. Tonight, Barth's guest will be a lady from down south who has a surprise for Barth, Sergei Nabokov, the dancing communist, and Happy Kind and the Mirth Makers. Thank you very much. I think that's a new record. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Firmwood tonight. I am Barth Kimball. <laughs> I'm really not this happy. Actually, if it weren't for the, the old show business tradition that the show must go on and the fact that uh, I am paid on a per show basis, uh, I wouldn't even be here tonight. I'd be at home mourning for a great love affair that never was and a great lady who was but now is only partly. Um, I, have, I have the sad, sad duty of explaining why Jane Tiffany, the beautiful and talented sportscaster on the Channel 6 news team, will, this is rough, will no longer be visiting this program or, or any other, at least for a while, because the sands have run out of Jane's hourglass figure. And it happened, <clears throat> it happened as it should have on the field of sports. Jane was doing a feature on the Fernwood Mules here in town, our local, <laughs> local Class D baseball team. Anyway, Jane was, Jane was standing near the batting cage when, when someone turned on that automatic pitching machine they have there, that iron, iron mic, they call it. Turned that on for batting practice, and Jane was beamed by, by an automated fastball and <laughs> terrible broken nose, very bad bloody nose, in fact. I hate to say that, but it's the case. Um, by the time the Fernwood Emergency Hospital could be reopened past its normal five o'clock closing time, <laughs> it was just about too late. So uh, Jane had run out of innings and uh, I had lost a lifetime of, well, possible outings. No, no, no. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. She's not dead. She's, um, at this point, she's, how to put it nicely, she's uh, a vegetable. <laughs> and uh, a, a beautiful, ripe vegetable, though. Very, very lovely. <laughs> yeah. And we're not going to let her just sit there and, right. well, as vegetables say, rot. Someone said in the audience, I wouldn't say that about her. In fact, the girls in the office are attempting to find out Jane's real last name so that her uh, family can be notified, and we're doing everything we can. Meantime, although we had really no time to prepare anything special, we did want to, in our small way, pay some kind of tribute to this very special woman. I hope you enjoy this. <clears throat> They took her out of the ball game. They carried her out of the park. I tossed up my peanuts and Cracker Jack when I heard the news that she might not come back. But it's root, root, root for the home team. And if she should go, it's a shame. But it's one, two, three strikes, you're out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jerry, that was kind of touching. Oh, you know, that was, I hate to say it, it was kind of fun. It's a shame these, uh, <laughs> these eulogies have to be for people when they're hurt or uh, injured, but otherwise they're really a, a lot of fun. And I think we have a good idea here. We're going to autograph this ball and send it over to Jane. So oh, that's a great she idea. Covers, she's going to have a little souvenir. Here, let me Inci just uh, get my hand back on there. Yeah, incidentally, this is uh, the same ball that struck her, so it should have some... <laughs> Uh, and some of the other... I think I'll just add mine here. Well, maybe it'll help her bounce through, Jerry. Well, I Actually, hope so. <laughs> we're hoping we, uh, as I said before, I told you people, it's not... It's serious, but it's not as bad as it could be. She did break her nose very badly, and, uh... How badly is it going to be? I mean, will she recover completely? Well, it's a lot of shock to the head area, and she has amnesia at this point, and, uh... Amnesia? Yeah. Maybe then I shouldn't have written Forget Me Not here. Jerry, <laughs> 
Uh, I'll just leave the ball. Okay. Uh, oh, you print your name. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. That's good. Just in case people say, who's that? Yeah, right. Well, the thing is about her, though, she has this terrible nosebleed, I guess, as you know, from the broken... She's also, and never knew this ahead of time, the doctors found out she is a hemophiliac, and, of course, there's no way to stop her. <laughs> Fortunately, we have a blood bank here in Fernwood, which is doing marvelous things to keep her going, and best news of all, of course, that's going to run out sooner or later, um, Cletus Emmett Wheelwelker. Bud Price's friend, the inventor, yes. has yes. invented a device whereby you can actually recycle your own blood rather than have grass. Oh, yes. So it's have more her nosebleeds right back in the arm, and she is basically keeping herself alive. And I think that's, that's the kind of girl she always was, and we hope she pulls through. He uses a, a very simple enema tube, uh, just a kind of a makeshift thing. Was... And it's in keeping with this whole uh, modern-day thing of energy recycling. You know. Yeah, I was trying to avoid the actual name of the trappings, but uh, well, you said it. Okay, uh, we'll be right back after these words. Stay with us. <laughs> Thanks, Happy. Happy kind of the mirth makers. Let's hear it for them. Aren't they wonderful? Yeah, we're pretty proud of him. Yeah, you know, Jerry, this is a heck of a nice idea, I think, to do this for her. Really, well, sh I think this really shows the size of your heart, really. Well, it was not. <laughs> really, it's, it's, it's nothing. At any rate, our next guest... Wait a minute, wait a minute, not so fast. Pull on the reins, we have a surprise for you, and I can't wait to see the expression on your face when you see who our next guest is. Uh, it's someone who you haven't seen in about eight months, and I know you're going to be tickled pink when this next guest comes out here. Any uh, guesses on uh, what it is? Jerry. Uh, I hate this. Okay. All right. You know that? I really do. Please, please don't play games with me on, on my show over the airway. Better than getting hit in the head with a hardball, though, is <laughs> Jay, no offense if you're listening, but then, of course, she isn't. Um, this is, I'm not going to hold you in suspense any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a nice Fernwood welcome and a big, warm hello uh, for someone who's come a long way for a joyful reunion with her own Barth Gimbal, your own Aunt Edith. Edith Irma Simpkins, come on out! <laughs> Holy! <laughs> How are you? Welcome to Fernwood. <laughs> uh, isn't this wonderful? Isn't this something? You know, Barth, we didn't even know you had an Annie. Mm. It until she called from Miami, trying to track you down, and then we said, would it be a... a just an emotional moment to reunite the both of you. Yeah, here. Actually, Jerry, this is not my aunt. Okay, <laughs> she's just a friend. Come yeah, it's back. It's real to me, nice Bob. to see Come you. Back. I'm not coming back. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's just a friend, and we got a big show tonight, so we're gonna get on with the rest of the Bart, show. Wait right. a minute! You surprised me. This your aunt has come hundreds of miles at her own expense. We want you to sit yeah. down here and talk over old times and get reacquainted. Come on, spend Jerry, a few that's minutes. ridiculous. And as I said before, she is not my aunt. Or aunt. <laughs> Come back to me, Bob. Yeah, I Come heard back. that. Okay. Our next guest is a gentleman who is... Oh, the car. <laughs> this is just some... An aunt and her nephew, like two peas in a pod, huh? Yeah, cool it, will you, Jerry? Yeah, okay. Cool the condominium has been completely redecorated. Woo! I even put vinyl on the roof of the Bentley. Oh, please, hold up your end of the bargain, Bob. Oh, I'd hold up my end if I were you, Bob. <laughs> Uh, Bentley, what a, a great aunt. You know, I, I had a, an aunt when I was a kid. She's still living. Uh, aunt Mary Louise, I thought she was a wonderful lady, but the only thing she ever gave me and my brother Conrad were a couple of tickets to a circus. You must be her favorite nephew. He's the greatest, Jerry. Oh, uh, uh, you're <laughs> right. Okay, Auntie. <laughs> Listen. Uh, uh, boss, please, please come back. Come to Palm Beach with me, please. We can take that cruise to Alcapulco just as we planned. <laughs> I put a radar range in the bedroom so that you don't have to get up at midnight for your melted cheese sandwich. Wow, what a man! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Listen, Aunt Edith, uh, it's very nice to see you again. Have a great trip back to Miami, really, and take good care, okay? Bye. Take Route 1 all the way back. Bye. <laughs> You've pushed me too far now. You think mirrors grow on trees? I put mirrors on every ceiling in that condominium. 
there were to be services rendered, Barth, remember? Things like taking you to the Seaquarium on Sunday afternoon and getting your uh, medical prescriptions filled, things like that. Very good. Please. Barth, that, that contract is binding one way or another. You're playing with fire, Barth. Okay, okay, let's just get this thing out in the open right here once and for all. This woman came to me in Miami and said she wanted to be my patron, and I was grateful. Everyone needs a patron. Michelangelo had his uh, Medici. I had a Feinberg, okay? Big sin. <laughs> right, goodness knows an artist needs freedom from financial worry to flourish, but I live in Fernwood now. You understand, Edith? Yeah. Fern Wood, okay? And I have just a little too much dedication to these great people to chuck it all for a couple of bucks and a couple mirrored ceilings and the good life. You understand? <laughs> Not only that, but I cannot cross state lines. You know, I can't even cross the Florida line until my lawyers get other lies ironed out, okay? <laughs> what happened in Florida, as far as I'm concerned, is over, kaput, and finished, and that includes you, and that's it. Amen, and that's all, and that's it. <laughs> if you need an extra nephew, I'm available. Jerry, oh, only one nephew per customer here. Okay. We'll be right back after these important words. Our next guest is, uh, well, there's not much to say about him. It speaks for itself. He's the dancing communist. Stay with us. Okay. Now that you're a member of the Channel 6 family, you might want to just sign. It's Jane Tiffany. Right. No, you would write your own name, not hers. <laughs> right, while you're doing that, my next guest has a very special story. He has defected from his native Russia, where he claims he was a famous dancer, but was harassed for political reasons. You hear about that all the time, mm -hmm. these defectors, for mm -hmm. various reasons. Not all of them dancers. Um, that's why he decided to come to America, where an artist is free to express himself. Here he is for the first time on an American stage, kind of a coup here for our show, the very comparable Sergei Nabokov. <laughs> Thank you. And now, in dreadful appreciation, I wish now to perform my dance, which is in spirit of friendships between Soviet peoples and American peoples. <laughs> Breaking free from chains that bind me to Mother Russia. Ah. <laughs> hey. hey, so sad to leave my homeland. Hey, leave my mother behind. Hey, leap to freedom, leap to freedom. Over the ocean, over the borders. Everywhere I turn, I see smiling faces of American people. Hello, no, glad to see you. It's Sergey, right? Yes, that is not, right. It's Sergei. not Serge. Sergey. Okay, this yes. is Serge. <laughs> oh, okay. <yes. laughs> I'm here with Sergey uh, Nabokov. Well, incidentally, baseball, an American uh, pastime. Um, you might want to sign yes, this. Uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sergey, I, I really don't know what to say about his performance. It's uh, kind of... Well, a I do. I'd say you're a very good entertainer, which is unusual because I don't usually care for communists who pretend they're defectors but are actually spies who've come over here to get information from us, Jerry. <laughs> I don't understand it exactly. Jerry, <laughs> Mr. Nabokov, uh, welcome to America, and Thank especially you. welcome to Fernwood. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be in a country where, where an artist, despite his uh, political beliefs, can, how you say, uh, do his own thing. Yeah. Yes? That is how you say <laughs> yes, it. Yes, yes. And we're very glad to have you on the show, yes, because this means, of course, that we won't have to pay to go see you do whatever you do uh, anywhere else. Isn't that right, <laughs> Jerry? Jerry Hubbard, co-host, driver's license, S55061. <laughs> Sergey, would you mind uh, telling us the story of how and why you came to leave Mother Russia? Well, it is my belief. Now, I cannot prove nothing, but it is my belief that the government thinks I'm a dangerous radical. 
Mm -hmm. So they got to use these methods to prevent me from performing the dance like you see me do here tonight. Yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, what exactly did they do to you? Well, oh, 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 oh they do nothing to me directly, you understand. Mm -hmm. They cannot do that. Uh, I am a star. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they do things uh, indirectly to sabotage my performance. I remember one night I am performing at Vladivostok Civic Auditorium. And I'm fine, going along very well. Then, just eight bars into my opening number, some people in the audience, they stand up and they start throwing things at me and yelling <laughs> terrible things at me. I don't understand. Why would they do that? Yeah. Well, I have the answer. It is secret police. Uh -huh. oh. The secret police, they come in and they scare them so much that the entire audience gets up and walks out. Well, you sure had guts then. Yeah, well, uh, then you have gall yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, the, uh, the owner of theater, he come out and, uh, oh boy, I don't know what they did to him, but I don't, uh, it must have been terrible because he was shaking all over. His face was red and he said to me, Sergey, I have to ask you to go. I say, but why, Boris? Why? Why? <laughs> We've been friends for 20 years. Uh, I saved your life during war. Why? And he said to me, because you stink. <laughs> So you decided to come here after all that harassment, huh? Well, uh, no, I make my decision after they uh, threaten my family. <laughs> my beloved mother, she came to me one day and she said, Sergei, why don't you go to America and stop embarrassing me in front of neighbors? <laughs> I say, then she said to me, Nepopraskovskia. Well, what's that mean? It means... You stink. Oh, yes. So that's when I decided to contact Vladimir. And he make all arrangements for me to get out of the country. Okay, is Vladimir uh, with the CIA or something like no, that? No, he's a travel agent. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he make, uh, buy my tickets and here I am. Mm -hmm. Did the uh, government, the Russian government, try at all in any way to stop you from defecting, from leaving the country? Well, they only pay half my fare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, what, do you want me to do another number now? No, no, I don't think so. Uh, but I do want to thank you very much for taking the time out oh, here cool. to tell your story to us. And I'm sure uh, the networks will be after a man with your talent, uh, just like you, like that. You know? oh, we'll be seeing you maybe with your own TV series just fall opposite us. <laughs> we'll be right back after these words. Don't go away. Just chatting here with Sergey, and uh, I'd like to thank all my guests invited who are on. Um, something interesting happened. I, I think everyone knows that when this show first went on the air, it was common knowledge that a star was born. <laughs> but uh, a lot of you don't know who that star is. Actually, uh, someone wrote in, said that they had a, a baby born on the very night that we first debuted here in Fernwood tonight. They're here tonight. They're in the front row. Jerry, would you be so kind of... Sure. Why don't we see if... Uh, bring them up. Ah, the real little star... Hi, are you the family with the baby? Oh, yes, we are. Why don't you come on up to the couch? I think Barth would like to talk to you, if uh, the little one uh, agrees. Oh, I hope she does. <laughs> <laughs> At what age do they start agreeing? Well, I think they, they, they don't uh, disagree. I think that's all we oh, can hope for. All right. Okay, we can, okay, we'll have the baby next. Oh. That's, oh. oh. What's the name? Is it Barth? It's Barth, yes. It She's a girl. Barth. We named him. You Bye. named him Barth. That's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, she's looking at you. Yeah. I think she recognizes you. Does she watch the show? Always. Sure. No kidding. She, it's feeding time. Uh, she has your hair. Great. <laughs> oh, oh, blue eyes. Yeah. My goodness. How do you go about having one of these? <laughs> well... The baby was born on the night, the, the first show the of... First the first show. Yeah. It, it was planned. Really? Yeah. The baby. Yeah. I mean, we didn't know. You know it wasn't them. like hit and miss like the show was. No. <laughs> How'd you like the show? Oh, well, you know, we... Did you get a chance to watch the really show that a, night? We really had a hard time watching it that night. We had been waiting for it, you know, knowing mm -hmm. that it was coming to mm -hmm. Fernwood. And then, um... 
she, she came along. Is cute. Oh, my God. Now she's going to grow up big, right? <laughs> I'm asking your question for you. Okay. Very nice having her up here. She's really darling. She's looking at you. She I'd like to have her back here every night, and we can watch her grow right through. <laughs> Through Cub Scouting, Brownies, Girl Scouts, the Ladies' Army, everything, all the way through. I just want to thank my guests tonight, uh, Sergei Nabokov, uh, thank you for not dancing any longer, and Edith, thanks for, you know what. Um, wait, 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 not so fast, Doris. I was just wondering if Mr. Uh, Nabokov would like a condominium. Yeah. We could, we could talk. Edith, Edith, I don't even think he's your type, okay? <laughs> Sit on it, Doris. <laughs> when you're called, Mr. Nabokov. Uh, why don't you call me, uh, Sergei? Okay, well, you can call each other whatever you want. You can call me a cab. You can call... <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow night. And she'll be back, and she'll be even older. That'll be wonderful. <laughs> See you then. <laughs>